for God here and there and everywhere, and He's right there. He's right there. Matter of fact, I want to read a scripture that uh, Paul said when he was preaching a sermon one time. He was uh, in the book of Acts, uh, the 17th chapter. He, <clears throat> I think they call it Mars Hill or whatever. And uh, Paul was preaching and he said, uh, Paul stood in the myth, midst of Mars Hill. These people, that they always wanted to hear some new thing. They, was looking at, they said, what would this babbler we say? And they were looking for some new thing to hear. And Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and he said, you know that. He said, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. People are superstitious. They're, they're, people are just superstitious. And he said, I perceive in all things you're too superstitious. He said, uh, he said, uh, for I passed by, I beheld your devotion, and I found this altar with an inscription to the unknown gods. They didn't know God, so they just had, they wanted to make sure they got all, make sure they, you know, they put the unknown God. So when he came by, he saw this inscription, he said, he said, whom therefore you ignorantly worship? He says, hey, I'm going to declare him to you. He said, God that made the worlds and all things there, and seeing he is Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't dwell in temples and temples made with hands. Neither is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing that he gives life and breath to all. All things. He said, He hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed in the bounds of their habitation. In other words, what he's saying is, Paul's saying this God that made everybody of one blood, he said, He, 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 he determined the times that you would be born. He, he, he specifically initiated, You're going to be born on this day, you're going to be born on that day, you're going to be. He, and then he initiated the, the, the bounds of your habitation. In other words, what he did was, God drew a, it's kind of like the ocean. You ever notice on the ocean? Uh, it's like God drew a line in the ocean. There it is. This is the beach. Now the tide might come up 10 feet or about 10 feet, but it's right there. And you might even get a tidal wave that comes in, a 100-foot tidal wave, and try to break the barrier where God drew that line for the ocean. And that tidal wave might completely go over that, that line. You know what? That water's going to seep right back over. And that was, and that was still there. In other words, he made your habitation. He said, all right, this is where you're going to live. All right? And you might move. That's because he drew your, your habitation to move. But you can't go out of where he put you. He put you here or there. And until he allows you to go somewhere else, you're stuck there. You feel like, well, you made the decision to move here and you're doing this and you're doing that. But no, no, no. He, he appointed your habitation. He appointed the time that you'd be born and, and, and the bounds of your habitation of where you live. He drew that line. That's why you are where you are. And he said, and then he said, he said and, and, and this is why he did that. He, this is why he said the time of your birth. This is why he said and drew the line of your habitation. This is why he did that. He said that they should seek the Lord. That they should seek. He made that. He put everything in its place. You know, God is God is awesome. You know, he'll he'll he's in more of control of our lives than we even give him credit for. It's just like, uh, for instance, to give an example of what God can do. If God wants, for instance, you to talk to somebody at some of or the gas station. There's somebody at the gas station he wants to talk, wants you to talk to. All he's got to do, he doesn't have to tell you, I want you to go to the gas station and someone that I want you to talk to. All he's got to do is have you drive down the road and say, man, I'm thirsty. I want a Dr. Pepper. He's got the urge for a doctor. I feel like I want a Dr. Pepper and a Snickers bar. So you just got some kind of desire, you pull into 7 Eleven, and there's the guy that he wants you to talk to. I mean, God has ways of manipulating situations for things to happen, and then you're at the right place at the right time. And that's what God, so God's, God's, he said that they should seek the Lord. If happily they might feel after him and find him, listen to this, though he be not far from everyone else. He's right there. He's right there. He's not far from everyone else. It doesn't matter if we're popular or poor or rich or famous. It doesn't matter if we're who we are or where we're from. If we're white, if we're black, if we're Asian, if we're African, if we're, if we're, if we're Hispanic, if we're Oriental, it doesn't matter anything. Nothing matters. He said, each of us, that happen we may find, feel after him, because he's not far from each and every one of us. And so, you know, it's just about feeling after God. And feeling after God, he, he, he can be found if you'll, if you'll look at your heart. If you'll look at your heart. You know, when you do something and you don't feel so right about it, something makes you kind of feel uneasy, like, mm, I just don't feel right about this. Something feels wrong about this. That's God. That's God. That's God. If, if, if we'll look into him, it's that still, small voice. Something in you, you see somebody, and something in you wants to have compassion and help somebody. And you listen, your heart's moving towards a situation. You can say, that's God. Right and wrong, it's all right. God put it in our hearts. God put it in our hearts. And if we'll be honest, 
Now see the mind, the mind will justify things. The, you gotta, now where you got to watch your heart, you have to watch your heart. Because the heart will go toward things of, of wickedness sometimes. But, but your heart knows. So that's the thing. When, you know, the heart will be given to something that's wicked. Sometimes uh, your heart will lust after something it's not supposed to be lusting after or, or desire something it shouldn't desire. And, and what happens is, it's, it, it's, not, it's not that your heart's deceived because you're, you know. It's like you'll be pulled a certain direction. You'll be struggling in a certain area. You'll be pulled a certain direction. And, and your mind will try to override your heart and justify your heart and say, it's all right. It's okay because this and this and this and this and this. But really deep down in the core, you really want to do this thing that you know is wrong. Your heart has told you it's wrong. But your mind is trying to override that wrong and say, it's all right because of this and this and this. And this is the reason why you can do this and this is the reason. But see, if we'll be honest with ourselves, if we'll be honest, we already know right. We already know right. And so that's why if we'll listen to our heart, if we'll listen to our heart, God is dealing with our heart. He's dealing with it. He's put something in there. He's wrote something in there for us to read right there in our heart. And if we'll listen to it, it's a small, still voice. And, and try not to let the mind override it. Matter of fact, let's look at, uh, I want to go to John. First John. The first epistle of John. He said something about the heart. He said, uh, John chapter 3, verses, John chapter 3, verses, um, um, 19 he says hereby we know that we, hereby we hereby we know that we are of the truth this is how we know we're of the truth this is how we know if we're if we're in the truth this is how we know if we're of the truth this is how we know he says hereby we know we're of the truth he said and and shall share our hearts before him we shall share our hearts before him he says for if our heart condemns that's it right there if our heart condemns yeah. See, your heart is set up to condemn you. Your heart is set up. It's set, it's, it, God has made something in you to automatically condemn you when you, when, when, you, when you displease Him. When you do something to displease Him, your heart is set to condemn you. He said, for if, this is how we know we're from the truth. If you're living a life and your heart's not condemning you, it don't matter what man points his fingers at you. No matter what man says about you. If your heart says, you know, if, you're, if, if your heart doesn't condemn you, you're not condemned. He said, for if our hearts condemn us, or excuse me, for if our hearts condemn us, our condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. He said, he said, uh, he said, for if our heart can, uh, uh, knoweth all things, beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have the confidence toward God. See, if we're, if we're living a life and our hearts is not condemning us, then we can have confidence toward God. See, you, and, and, and some people say, well, I'm not condemned, I'm not condemned, but they don't have confidence to God. So that, that's not a true statement. Because if you are not condemned, the Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. In other words, if you know you're right, just like uh, in the court of law, if someone come, if a if a cop comes up to you, or if a cop comes up to you and pulls you over and says, uh, uh, you were speeding, you were speeding, and the whole time you have you, you, you specifically set your speedometer to a certain speed, uh, you know, you're wanting to fight that now. You're like, no, I know I wasn't speeding, you know. You, you, you're bold. You're bold. So now if you was speeding, you're like, oh, yes, sir, officer. Yeah, I'm sorry, sir. Oh, are you sure? I was getting, you, but see, it's different when you know you didn't do nothing wrong. When you know, now you're bold. See, the righteous are bold as a lion. When you're right, you're bold because you know you're right. You know you're right. It just be like if you're walking around in Walmart and you ain't stole nothing and a security guard walks up to you and says, uh, we, uh, we, you know, we, we got you uh, stealing something, blah, 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 blah. You're going to be bored. You're going to be like, Psh, I don't know who you're talking to. I mean, you're not afraid. You're not going to be like, oh, oh. Now, if you did steal something, you'd be like, oh, oh I didn't. No, I didn't. Uh, you'd be, you'd be, you wouldn't be bold. But if you didn't steal nothing, you'd be bold. You'd be like, get your hands off me. No, no, I'm not. You, I mean, you're not afraid. You're not fearful. You're bold because you're right. You're righteous. You know you're right. And the same thing with, he said, if our hearts condemn us. See, if we, we can, now the mind will play tricks. The mind, the heart will make you feel like you're doing something wrong. And then the mind will try to say, no, 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 that's all right because of this and because of that. But see, and, 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 and it'll even almost convince you that you are all right, that you're not doing wrong. The only thing is, though, you know to the core that when you go to God, you feel like you can't really go to God boldly. You feel like you can't go to God and say, Lord, I love and just and just and, and seek God because you feel like there's some kind of separate, you don't feel connected completely. You feel like you, you, you know, you can deceive yourself and thinking that you're doing right and when you're not, but your heart knows. 